Let's see. Make sure they can see my medal so they know that I'm a real runner and not just some loser with thousands of dollars worth of shoes just sitting everywhere around his house. Oh. Am I recording? Now that I've had a chance to put a few hundred miles on my Torrin 6s, I think I can give it a fair assessment based on some of the other shoes in Ultra's Torrin lineup thus far. I've run many hundreds of miles in the Ultra Torrin 4.5s and the 5s, and so I want to talk today how the 6 not only compares against those shoes, but would the Torrin 6 be a good shoe for someone that's never run in an Ultra shoe or is looking to get into the Ultra lineup? Is this a better choice over the Escalantes, the Riveras, some of their other shoes? Uh, that's what I'm here to answer. If you aren't familiar with Ultra shoes, they offer a zero drop shoe with a very wide toe box to give a more natural foot strike and stride, at least in my opinion. They offer a wide variety of models uh, with different stack heights, different cushioning, different support. Uh, and so the Ultra Torrin 6 is their max stack height, max cushion, long distance road shoe. This is a shoe that you're gonna wanna do some long miles on. It's a shoe that you're gonna wanna run some marathons in. Uh, if I was gonna go for a 5K or a 10K or half marathon, uh, I would go for something like the Escalantes or the Riveras. And that's not to say that you couldn't run a marathon or longer in the Escalantes or the Riveras, but the Torn is what is gonna give you the most comfortable feel for those long miles, especially on that hard pavement. These are a long distance road shoe, but I've taken them on some very light trails, some non-technical trails, so in fact, I even used a pair of Torrin 5s for the entirety of Long Haul 100, which is a 100 mile ultra marathon that takes place on some pretty non-technical trails. And uh, for that, I absolutely loved it. They were comfortable the whole time. The cushioning was great. And this is definitely my go-to shoe for not only my long distance training and most of my day-to-day -day training, but also the one I use the most in a lot of the Florida ultra marathons I do. To jump right into it, the Torrin 6 attempts to solve a few minor issues that some may have had with the Torrin 5 without switching up the formula too much, so they maintain that Torrin look feel that I know and love. So the updates that were made weren't a big selling factor for me at least, but if you're someone that previously tried the Torrin and didn't like it, or if you were turned away by some of the reviews of the Torrin 5s, then you may be interested in the Torrin 6 but I'm not sure those changes were drastic enough to warrant uh, the purchase if you were coming from a Torrent 5, didn't like it, and were really expecting them to do something different with the, with the 6. However, it is showing the Ultra as listening to reviewers, and they're trying to make the changes that they think the customer wants to see. So that is something that's appreciated. So the first major change would have to be this heel collar. Now, the heel collar of the Torrent 6 is much more narrow, and it hugs the foot a little more than the Torrin 5 did. Additionally, if you look at that, uh, that heel collar, it comes up quite a bit higher than the 5. Now, is that really necessary? I'm not sure, but it gives the Torrin 6 uh, quite a unique look and differentiates it from its Torrin 5 brother. Now, I never really had an issue with my heel slipping in the Torrin 5. I actually really like the feel of the Torrin 5 heel. So to see that the Torrin 6 was going to offer a more narrow heel collar that hugged the foot, I was a little bit worried that I was going to experience some chafing, some blistering. I'm happy to say that there was none of that. It hugs it just enough to where it makes it feel a little more secure. Again, I never felt my heel slip with the 5 and I definitely didn't feel it with the 6. So while this change doesn't necessarily affect me too much, it may have affected some runners that had some heel slippage with their Torrens. I'm gonna go ahead and say this change is, is a positive because, again, while it doesn't affect me too much, I can definitely feel that it has a snugger fit and it's a change that I don't mind seeing in the Torn lineup if they continue to, to keep it. So overall, it's positive, feels a bit more secure, and again, still comfortable, doesn't cause any chafing on my heel, so that's, that's the major factor there. Another major change I noticed was under the removable insole on the on the midsole material. Now you're gonna have to forgive me, I'm not a, an expert on shoe construction, I'm not a shoe engineer, 
so I don't know the exact terminology and makeup of the shoe. In the Torin 5s and some of the previous Torins, there's this popcorn-like material that's underneath the insole. I've noticed that on some of my runs, when I come home, if my shoes are dirty or been in the mud, or they stink to all high heavens, I like to take out the insole, I rinse them, I scrub them down. I noticed with the fives that the material was starting to flake off after, after many, many miles. And uh, while it wasn't a major concern of mine, I definitely did notice it. And uh, with the sixes, it seems like they went to more of a traditional midsole construction. So that's something that I'm not gonna have to worry about getting home, scrubbing the shoes down real rough, having that peel off. A very, very, very minor uh, observation. You probably won't even notice this material peeling off until the shoe's well past the date of expiration. And uh, it's, it's not a big deal, but something that I noticed and thought I should point out. And I'll consider it a bit of a positive because uh, it's just that peace of mind knowing that I can come home, uh, really scrub it down, and not have to worry about that. Now getting into a negative. So if you're not familiar with the Torn 5, they did this update to the tongue material, uh, super lightweight, very breathable. Uh, however, it's quite abrasive. Some runners were noticing that there was some blistering and some chafing that was going on their legs because this material would rub up against their foot after many, many repetitions and it would cause a lot of irritation. For me personally, this was never a big deal. I wear quarter crew socks, so this tongue, no matter what sock I own, is always resting against a sock material. So it's something that I would have never even noticed until I read some reviews online. That being said, going into the sixes, this material on the tongue, they did improve it. It is a lot softer. You can tell just going back and forth that the material is softer, but it's it's just not quite enough, at least from what I've seen from some of the reviews. It's still a little bit abrasive, and especially after uh, long runs, that heavy repetition, this is gonna irritate some runner's feet uh, if you don't wear socks that, that cover it up. So, would have really liked to see them do more to fix this issue, uh, test it out a little bit more. Uh, going forward, uh, I hope they do fix this issue and the easiest case would just be to revert it to an old uh, design such as the Torrent 4s that had a more comfortable uh, tongue. So that is a negative and if you were someone that was affected by the Torrent 5s irritating your ankle then Torrent 6s are, might do the same thing. I'm not going to say it's going to rub it the same exact way but at least from the reviews I've seen uh, still cases of people's feet getting irritated from it. The next change I noticed was the construction of the, the upper knitting. Uh, it seems to be a bit different. It doesn't have this uh, plasticky piece on it now. It's one entire knit design. But do I notice much of a difference between the fives and the sixes? Not quite, but it looks nice, uh, it feels nice, and it cleans off real well. So uh, I'm gonna give it a positive just because, you know, it's one of those small incremental improvements that, that they have to make for the next shoe in order to justify uh, making another shoe. <laughs> now, the final change I noticed, and one that is uh, the most negative for me, is the fit of the shoe, particularly around the midfoot. Uh, right here on the midfoot, it's a little bit tight. When I put it on the shoe, tightened it up, I felt it pressing against the, uh, the inside of my foot. And I didn't like that. I don't like when a shoe that previously fit fine is now tight in certain areas. The toe box is still perfect. It's wide, it feels great. They didn't make any change there, but it just feels a little bit tighter around that midfoot. And I was worried that it would cause some blistering, some irritation, never did any of that. Uh, it feels fine, foot feels great. And even after breaking the shoe in, it still felt a bit tight. So I'm gonna give this a negative because while it didn't affect my running performance, uh, it's kind of a trend I've been seeing Ultra going in the last few years and especially been reading about how they've been making their shoes more and more narrow. I don't like that trend. I don't want my Torrens to be narrow. I've heard about this with the Escalantes that even the toe box is getting more narrow. Uh, I buy Ultras because I like that wide toe box. I like that, that natural feel on my foot. I don't, I don't like that direction. Again, it's not anything that's caused me discomfort, but I just don't like that trend that they're going toward. So, in conclusion, 
Despite a few minor shortcomings, I would still highly, highly recommend the Torrin 6 if you were coming from the Torrin 5s and you like that shoe, or you're just getting into the Torrin lineup. Uh, it's a great shoe, it's extremely comfortable, like I said. This can last on your long runs, your long races, but also the short runs. This is the shoe I use in probably 90% of my training just because it's so comfortable and I do a lot of slow, little heart rate training. So I'm usually picking up the Torrens if I'm, if I'm going out for a run around the neighborhood. And even if I'm going to some of my local parks that have some non-technical trails, uh, it's not worth picking up my Lone Peaks and going out with those. So I'll just grab my, uh, grab my Torrens and head out because you know, unless it's raining or it's muddy or whatever, it's not gonna, I'm not gonna fall, slip. These provide plenty of traction. Now, would I recommend picking these up against a pair of Torn 5s? Well, there's the real question there. So you can get a brand new pair of Torn 5s online right now for about 100 bucks, oftentimes under $100. The Torn 6, you're looking at $160 brand new and I haven't been able to find any deals thus far on it. And for that single matter, I'm gonna be sticking with the fives for as long as I can until I can't find them anymore. But as soon as the fives go out of stock, I'm gonna pick up the sixes and make these my, my full-time shoe. But again, you can pick a pair of these for a hundred bucks and I got a family to feed. My wife checks the bank account often. She, she'll notice a pair of $160 shoes hit the bank account I can sometimes get a pair of hundred dollar shoes to slide under the radar. Not often though, she catches me a lot and she yells at me and then I have to go run in a pair of old Torrin 5s until the bottoms just give out and my feet are just, just destroyed. So, I'm, <laughs> what am I talking about? So looking forward, I'm really hoping that Ultra makes two major changes to the Torn lineup for the 6.5s or the 7s or whatever the next iteration is. Uh, the first one being that, that tongue. I hope they either figure out that tongue design or revert it to a, a previous version just because uh, it's turned off a lot of runners and you know this shoe if you go online it, it's got 3 out of 5, 2 point something out of 5 reviews at a lot of websites even at ultra.com. and. A lot of those reviews are saying, man, that tongue is not good. <laughs> so I, I don't, this isn't a, this isn't a two and a half, three out of five shoe. This is an excellent shoe. This is a shoe that I've run many miles in, done many, many races in, and I love it. So definitely deserves a uh, higher praise than what you might see online for some of the, some of the negative reviews. The second major change that I hope that they make or that they don't make is the, the width of the shoe. I hope they don't continue to narrow down the Torrens, you know, narrow down the Escalantes, narrow down the Riveras. I mean, don't do that. But <laughs> if you had, if I had to sacrifice something, it would be those shoes. But for my my Torrens, my I love these shoes. Please stop narrowing them down. Keep the toe box the same. Keep the keep the fit nice and wide. This is. Again, I like this because I can wear these shoes for my ultra marathons. So when my feet swell up or I use thicker socks, thinner socks, it it always feels good. I don't feel like I'm running out of room in this shoe. So uh, I want that I want that nice wide shoe. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you found this review helpful. Uh, please, down in the comments, ask any questions about the shoe, ask anything that I may have missed. Again, I've run uh, probably thousands of miles in the torn lineup thus far. Uh, couple thousand on the four and a halfs and the fives and now a few hundred on the sixes so um, I can probably answer any questions you have uh, I'm pretty familiar with the rest of the torn lineup so if you have any questions about the, those shoes the Escalantes, Rivera's, Lone Peaks uh, you know shoot something in the chat and uh, thank you very much for watching is it over Listen, honey, I know. It was either clothes for the kids or a new pair of ultra torn sixes. These marathons don't run themselves. I need shoes. Come on. <laughs> it's funny. You're funny.